This is exactly right. Welcome. This is my favorite murder. The mini episode. Where we read mini episodes. Uh, your emails, our mouths. What a combination. <laughs> Ready for the first one? Do it. My grandparents survived the Hyatt Regency collapse. <gasps> oh, shit. Nuh uh. It was in the middle of my pile. And when I got to that subject line, I was like, what? This is it. You buried the lead. Okay. Ladies. I was so surprised to hear Karen share the story of the Hyatt Regency collapse. It was a tragic event that even here in Kansas City seems almost forgotten. My grandparents were at the Hyatt that night and survived the disaster. My grandmother passed away when I was a baby, but my grandfather used to tell the story quite often. I remember when I was a little girl and would go downtown on school trips or with friends, I would proudly point out the Hyatt to my friends and tell the story of how the hotel collapsed on my grandparents. Oh. The way my grandpa told it was this. He and my grandmother went to the dance with two other couples. So there was a tea dance that they were having right. there when that happened that day. So they were there. They were standing near the bar waiting to order drinks when a special song came on. One of the other women said it was her and her husband's song. So she dragged her husband to the dance floor with her. My grandfather told the second couple to go on ahead that he and my grandmother would get the drinks for everyone. So the second couple left for the dance floor. <gasps> My grandfather was at the bar ordering drinks when they heard the crash, and afterwards they couldn't see anything but dust. Someone grabbed them and helped them out of the building, and they survived with minor injuries. It wasn't until the next day that they learned the four friends who had been with them had all perished oh. in the collapse. My grandfather is certain that they would have been killed if they hadn't stayed behind to get drinks. Oh. In retrospect, he likely had a great deal of survivor's guilt, but as a hardened WW2 veteran, he was conditioned to downplay tragedy. Hey, hey, who isn't? Um, he said he still knows exactly what song was playing when the ceiling collapsed, mm. but for the life of me, I can't remember oh, what song he told me it come was. Come on. My grandfather passed away a few years ago at the age of 94, and I regret not keeping better track of his stories. Lady in red oh. is dancing. <laughs> that's it, right? I just thought of any song from the 80s. That's the Lady one that Lady in came red. Out. That's perfect. There it is. And also just the perfect song to haunt you terribly. Yeah. Uh, despite hearing the story from my grandpa many times over the years, it wasn't until I heard Karen's telling of the story that I gave any thought to the first responders that night. As a first responder myself, it's humbling to think that I might not be here if not for the first responders who saved my grandparents. Aww. Maybe I'll catch you sometime. You're in KC, SSDGM, Sabrina. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a goodie. Uh, we love those ones. I mean, we hate it. It sucks. We love it. Okay. We love the background information. That's right. We love the personal firsthand telling of, oh, my God, I was there when that thing came down. That's right. Because these are Ugh. real people that this shit happens to. And we know it. This is called Insane Sleepwalking Scare. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Steven, and furry friends. I started going back and listening to some older episodes like any true murderino would do. And I came across the story of the sleepwalking murderer, Ken Parks. My crazy sleepwalking story also happens to take place in Canada only seven years later in 1994. My family and I vacationed to Niagara Falls almost every year during my childhood. Mm -hmm. I remember so vividly that we stayed in a Ramada. I was six and my brother was eight. We went to sleep and woke up like any other normal night of our trip. Our phone rang around 7 a.m. that morning and it was the front desk asking my mom if her son was safely returned to his room that night. My mom told the woman on the phone that she had the wrong room, given that my brother and I were still asleep in the bed next to her. The woman stated, ma'am, our security officer brought your son back to his room at 3 a.m. He was found trying to cross the main intersection in front of the hotel. My mom had this puzzled look on her face and asked my dad if anyone had come or gone through the door during the night. As a former police sergeant, my dad always double locked the doors and even kept the desk chair in front of the door for added safety. Yeah. My parents were still not convinced that they had the right family, but they decided to wake up my brother and ask him themselves. My brother said that he had a normal night's sleep and doesn't remember anything out of the ordinary. So we start to get ready for the continental breakfast, the only thing I came for, <laughs> and my brother sits on the end of his bed to put on his socks. My mom lets out this horrible scream and yells, why are the bottom of your feet black? Oh, my brother looked terrified as he looked at them himself. Turns out the Ramada parking lot is asphalt and the front desk woman was true. 
<laughs> I'm just reading it as you wrote it. My dad had the security guard come to our room and explain the whole story and identify my brother as the child he returned to our room. Turns out my brother was able to tell the officer our room number and everything during the night. Why in God's name did the officer not wake up my parents? Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry how old is the kid eight. Oh my god <laughs> he just slips him in the door and walks away night night he didn't want to get involved head. yep <laughs> you little so and so don't go up by the cars get anymore. out of there it's a story we joke about in our adult years but having young children myself I am still a tad freaked after the incident my parents brought a door alarm to every hotel we stayed in to ensure that they would wake up if my brother decided to uh, take another solo adventure huh. I think of the story every time i hear billy joel's the river of dreams <laughs> which one's that lady <laughs> in red that one is dance no it goes like this in the middle of the night oh, i go walking in my okay got it that makes sense yeah stay sexy and always check the bottom of your kids feet in the morning callie <laughs> <laughs> As a rule from now on. Thanks, Callie. Oh, what an insane near miss. Dude. And then also, how horrifying. To, it's three in the morning out in front of this Aramada, <laughs> and it's pitch black, and you're just trying to drive back from the fucking cool party you were at, and there's a sleeping eight year old walking in front of oh your car. Oh my God. Like dazed look, pajama uh, jams. And you just keep going because it's the 80s. Pajam so fuck jams, everything. you've done it. You're like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not getting involved. I can't get involved with that child. <laughs> not now. The subject line of this one is, when murder gets you an A, Ooh. Karen Georgia and Fluff Nugget Menagerie, <laughs> including Steven. That is <laughs> complicated. That is a new low. <laughs> But well written. Yes. In my town, seniors in high school can take an emergency prepared. <laughs> that's it. That's the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Emergency preparedness class in their senior year. The elective beats baking cakes in home economics and was less of a physical risk to me than wood shop where I surely would have lost an extremity or two. The final project in emergency preparedness includes taking a police ride along and giving mm. a presentation about our experience. Yes. At the time, I lived in a small, sleepy town in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. Standard ride-along presentations told stories of minor drug infractions, traffic stops, and when they were really eventful, a DUI arrest or even busting a house party full of classmates for underage drinking. Oh, how embarrassing. During my ride-along, we spent most of our time running plates, catching speeding drivers, and we even recovered a stolen bicycle and returned it to its happy owner. Oh. Uh, we were driving back to the station when we received a call of a neighbor complaint. The neighbor said that the mangy mutt um, uh, next door wouldn't shut up and was howling. We pulled up to the house and could not see or hear the dog. What we did see was a front door wide open on the home. <sighs> the detective instructed me to stay in the vehicle and went inside. It was not two minutes later. The detective came running out of the house holding a large dog and flung open the hatch of the SUV. When he got closer, all he said was, we have a problem. That's scary. Oh, my God. He, he called for backup, told me not to get out of the car, and was off. I heard slight whimpering coming from the back of the SUV and realized the dog he was carrying was not the threat that was reported, but he was sad. Oh. I crawled in the back of the SUV, used a blanket, and laid back there with him. I later found out the dog's name was Moose. Moose. Moose, the most loyal of dogs, was merely an innocent bystander, and his howls were cries to notify someone, anyone, that his owner was hurt. As if we needed further proof that dogs are better than humans. Um, that was a parenthetical. Yeah. When the detective entered the home, he found a grisly scene of a single gunshot victim and Moose laying next to him. Aww. It turns out the dispute was an escalated landlord-tenant issue, and the homeowner was murdered by his tenant, a man living in a nearby guest house. He stayed in his home after the crime and was arrested that same day. Oh, my God. The crime scene was closed, so I spent nearly six hours in that SUV with Moose. Wow. Dispatchers, <laughs> yeah, right? Dispatchers had the fun job of telling my parents that their 16-year-old daughter would be late coming home <laughs> from her ride-along because she was stuck in a murder crime scene. <laughs> They took the news well because they had no other choice, I suppose. I presented to my class my ride-along experience, but didn't get to divulge many details mm. since the case was an active one. Fast forward two years, and I was working at our local courthouse. Murder cases are assigned to judges due to their complexity, and the first murder case assignment we got was this case. I wasn't able to work on the case since I was a named witness. Oh, my God. But my judge did hear it, and a jury convicted the defendant, and he was sentenced to life in prison. 
I still work for the courts today and I'm never short on MFM content, whether that's local woman feeding murder victims to her pigs, meth-induced cult murders, or the time I had to hold up four foot tall images of severed penises. (gasps) Yes, more than one for the jury, but more on that later. I know you're wondering, and yes, I did get an A on that paper. Thanks for your time, Anonymous. Oh, I bet. (laughs) I bet the fact that she had to stay there for six hours was so comforting to Moose. Like, if Moose had to be there by himself that whole time, oh, in the, the back strange of a car, car, like that's so... having witnessed really bad violence. I wonder what happened to Moose. I was Poor really Moose. hoping she kept him because then I would have cried. I'm sure she didn't let anything happen to Moose. No, why would she? Okay, why would she ever? With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Goodbye. I'm not going to read you the title of this one. Okay. Guys, it says, (laughs) lots of wise, all caps. Yes. Turns out I do have something to contribute to the MFM verse. Here we go. In 2011, a man named Luke Crisco went to the 2011 Hanuman Boulder Yoga Festival where he climbed into the tank of a porta potty to spy on women. No. Because that's his thing, where he was found out, arrested, and sent to prison for several years. Good job, Colorado. Cut to about a week before this happened, my friend and I were at a house party in Denver. Sometime around beer 30, (laughs) 11.30 Denver time, when looking for volunteers to hoof it to the LQ for more grips. I don't know what any of that means. Liquor store? For more beer? Probably. I'm square. Uh... (laughs) A woman screamed out there that there's some fucking pervert laying down in the bathtub masturbating. It was, you guessed it, Luke fucking Crisco. Oh, no. As you can imagine, the last thing anyone in attendance wanted was cops around. So he was located and and uh, kicked out as gently as 10 metal dudes living all in one house are wont to do. <laughs> there was the instant pang of, holy shit, I was totally in there. And also, have you seen who lives here? How did you lay down in that bathtub? Ugh. Still love you dudes, but your house was a war zone. However, as I was solidly in my early 20s, quote, I can't be this asshole forever phase. I realized the joke was on him because everyone knows you only use the bathroom at a house party to get lit. And then if you have to go to the bathroom, you go to the bar across the street. We have manners. They have toilet paper. It all works out in the end. By the way, you guys inspired me to stick with my therapy journey, and I have finally found someone who can help me unwind my collective bullshit and experience this joy thing people keep talking about. <laughs> Thank, forever thankful, Jess. Oh, my God. Ew, uh, Everything, every aspect of that story was disgusting. Uh-huh. And also just how fucked up are you when you lay down in a bathtub and jerk off at a house party? With like the, she must have had the curtain closed. Right. But just the he sound. wants to get caught. Yeah. I mean, like there's that's part of it. Also, like a yoga festival festival. If you're like you have a scat fetish, it's not that I feel like a vegan. It's like a lot of vegans <laughs> and use your imagination for what just. that means. <laughs> It's good or bad. I don't lentils know. Lentils going in, right. lentils coming out. Uh, guys. Guys. Guys, you hear it all on this podcast. <sighs> okay. Okay. The subject of this is paramedic first responder story, lighthearted. Hey, ladies, Stephen, J. cats, dogs. My boyfriend is a paramedic in Orange County and has been for years. 
Being a longtime listener, I always ask him for crazy stories or if he walked into a crime scene or whatnot, and he never tells me anything good. Oh. Recently, he came home and said, hey, so I ran this weird call last night, and I immediately got super excited, and I knew I'd be emailing you. <laughs> Supposedly, some guy broke into a house and pointed a gun at the homeowner, who was thankfully the only one there that night. The homeowner ran into a bedroom and grabbed a gun and aimed it back at the original mm. guy with the gun. But before you think this is getting crazy, the homeowner grabbed a Nerf gun and started firing little <laughs> foam Nerf bullet things at the guy with the real gun. I guess the guy with the real gun was so confused or distracted that he fired a few shots, missing the man with the Nerf gun except for one bullet grazing his leg and ran out. So when my boyfriend got there, he walked into a house with Nerf bullets all what? over the floor, a man bleeding from his leg and bullet holes in the wall behind him. The homeowner is all good and was more upset at the fact that the kid's Nerf gun had blood on it and he had to clean it. Ugh. Stay sexy and always carry a Nerf gun with you just in case. Allie. That is so dangerous. It's, that could have gone so poorly. It's so dangerous. And and also, if that man on the ground had been killed, it would have looked like a Nerf murder. Like when the, yeah. when the first responder walked in, it'd just be like, well, from everything I gather here. Yeah. This man was actually murdered by a Nerf gun. Oh, my God. <clears throat> well, congratulations, Allie. Good job. Yeah, you've done it. Uh, now you can break up with your boyfriend. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Don't break up with him. Okay. This is called, I was hit by a car while inside a steak restaurant. Lighthearted. Mm -hmm. Hi, all. This is my hometown story and almost surely my claim to fame. I was hit by a car while inside a steak restaurant. My husband, brother, and his girlfriend and I were uh, went to our local steak joint, kind of fancy, several years ago to celebrate something or other. I forgot what. And we were seated at a foretop at the far wall underneath a big screen TV. I had first choice of seats and chose the one under the TV against the wall with a broad view of the room. I ordered an old-fashioned with a double shot of bourbon, my favorite cocktail, and a ribeye. There we all sat, eating steak, me drinking bourbon, when my brother's eyes grew wide. Suddenly there was a loud crash. People jumped up and started yelling at me, gesturing and pointing. I turned around to see a car bumper poking through the wall inches from where I was sitting <laughs> and looked up to see the big screen TV dangling by wires right over my head. Oh, shit. You know, I do this. I, I sit in the right place so I can see the whole room. But little do you know, the wall behind you is where yep. the fucking car is going to come through. <laughs> Um, Wait, it was from behind her? So I think it was the back wall of the restaurant. Oh, shit. So she had her back to that wall. <laughs> the big screen TV is above her head. <laughs> it's almost crashes through the wall. Oh, my God. Isn't that insane? Um, bah, 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 bah. If the car had been an inch or two farther into the restaurant, that car would have mowed me down and that goddamn TV would have finished me off. Yeah. I learned that I'm the kind of person who doesn't immediately run away from danger. No. In the middle of all this craziness, I calmly picked up my steak and cocktail and moved to a farther table, <laughs> sat down, and continued eating. Sorry, can I just add something? Yeah. That might be because you were drunk. It says, in hindsight, the bourbon may have had something to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good. I didn't want to accuse anybody of anything. No, you're not wrong. <laughs> but that's kind of the joy of alcohol, is that like, yeah. there's a little bit of a nice... Uh, Hazy a kind buffer. of distance, yes. That's right. An ambulance came rolling in, sirens on. The cop made me go to the ambulance where I had to sit to have my blood pressure taken, etc., etc. While diners stood around craning their necks to see the woman who got hit by a car while in a steak restaurant. Hmm. Uh, all I can think about was my steak getting cold. My asshat brother stood outside the ambulance laughing and pointing at me. After having two paramedics examine the scratch on my arm, worriedly, they let me go. My brother, his girlfriend, and my husband had to, got to go finish their dinners while mine was taken away because, all caps, there was too much plaster in it. <laughs> yes, because, all caps, I got hit by a car. After I got hit by a car, my reaction was to continue eating a steak salted with plaster. <laughs> you know, priorities. Uh. But kindly, Mr. Steak, the owner, comped our meal and made me a new <laughs> steak complete with a twice baked potato and the ubiquitous ice uh, steakhouse iceberg salad hell yeah that's right an article about the car accident was in the local paper yes i was named as the woman who got hit by a car while inside a goddamn steak restaurant for weeks after i received advertisements for personal injury lawyers all i wanted was a steak <laughs> today at the fancy steakhouse there's a drive-up window where the hole in the wall used to be what? <laughs> i 
I'd like to think I had a hand in that window somehow. I haven't been to a steak restaurant since, and I'm vegetarian now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay sexy and don't sit under a big screen TV against the back wall of a steak restaurant. <laughs> Hugs, Sharon. And then it says, P.S. My latest book, Girls on the Verge, was co- on Cosmo's best books list along with yours. So that makes us book sisters, right? Sharon. Oh my God. Congratulations. Sharon Biggs Waller. And then she writes X. What's the name of the book again? The book is on- Girls on the Verge. It looks really good. Uh, <clears throat> Sharon Biggs Waller. Wow. Check it out. That's amazing. <laughs> great ending. <laughs> I don't, yeah, that was great. Okay. Are you telling me that somewhere in this country, there is a steak restaurant with a drive up window that I could go get a twice baked potato? How have we not gone we, to this now? Can we please go now? Let's have all steakhouses have drive up windows. What city do you remember? I don't know. Sharon, can you please let us know what city? Yeah. We need to know. What, I mean, is it like a. It's she said Mr. Fancy. Steak. Well, she called him Mr. Steak. Oh, oh. Because she, you know. Uh, it sounded fancy, though. It did sound fancy. But oh, then, man. Drive through. Listen, Roots Chris, when you get a fucking drive through, let's do that thing. Let us know. Come on. <laughs> Um, oh, well, what a great slew of letters we got this week. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for sending them in. Thanks. Send yours in by going to our website. You can um, and submit one there or just send it to my favorite murder. And I'd Gmail. like to do a call out for just regular old hometowns. What is this? What is the crime story from your hometown that happened big or small that made you get into true crime the first time? Because we've gone right. off on, ooh, sorry, on all these tangents yeah. um, and we get lots of them and they're great, but we really should be doing, um, you know, we need the meat and potatoes, Mr. Stan. Yeah. <laughs> we need the drive through so we can drive up and grab our meat and potatoes. Right. And then as well have some plaster. That's right. Send us your drive through version of a steakhouse. <laughs> creepy mm. drive through stories would be good too. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Are there? Do people have creepy drive through stories? I'm sure. Well, you know, people who've worked in um, Ooh, yeah, 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 fast yeah. food okay. have the worst it. stories, I'm sure. I didn't We'd think love of to it hear from those. that side of the window. Oh yeah. my God. Send them in. Both directions, but if you've worked at a fast food restaurant and something creepy has happened to you, please. That's right. Please tell us we'll about have it. have to know. <laughs> Uh, but also, I'm also asking also. for regular ones. <laughs> uh, stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, do you want a cookie? Ah!